Muhammad and we believe the messengers brought books. So the last book being the Quran. The Quran says, um, It says, the God says, I did not create jinn, which is a separate creation, and mankind except to worship me. So this worship is to recognize God and to live a, a life the way he wants. That's what we understand our purpose is. In that, obviously, we have wives, we have children, we have work, but the main, the purpose we have is to worship God. Okay. Do you believe in God or? I do. Okay. Are you Christian or? Okay. Have you ever looked at Islam? I have actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You you know we believe in Jesus. I mean, I do believe in Jesus, but that's the thing, like, Christian approach is obviously a bit different, is it? Yes, because <laughs> we believe in Jesus, yes. but we believe he was a like messenger, a messenger yeah. to the children of Israel. Yeah. And we don't believe he was a human sacrifice. Yeah. Do you believe he was God, or...? Okay. Yeah. You don't mind me asking why? I just do. <laughs> okay. So you believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Okay. But again, like in our view, that's just a one god, is it? Because yeah, I yeah, know yeah. you're gonna tell me that that is like three gods. Uh -huh. But in our view, it's still one. <laughs> but Jesus, he he yeah. worshipped the Father, isn't it? In a way. In a way, yeah. And according to the Bible, Jesus himself he had a god. Okay. You know, I, I don't know if you're aware, like, in the Gospel according to John, it mentions in uh, chapter 20, verse 17. This is, according to the narrative in the Gospel of John, we don't accept that the Jesus was crucified. But according to the narrative, Jesus was crucified, mm -hmm. and then he came to his disciples, okay? Yeah, yeah. And then it said that Mary Magdalene, she wanted to touch Jesus because obviously according to the narrative she was surprised so he said to her do not touch me because I have not ascended to my father but tell my brothers as in tell, tell the disciples that I must go to my father and your father my God and your God I mean this is John 20 17 so we would say if Jesus had a God and he worshipped God, then he cannot be God. It's complicated, is it? <laughs> it's complicated. It's, it, yeah. it, it could be complicated or it could be very easy. Mm. It's complicated when you say that the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, these are three separate persons, but they're all one God. It's complicated when you say that Jesus is fully man and fully God at the same time. I would say this is this is complicated, but if you say that God is one, He is the Almighty, the All-Knowing, the All-Merciful, the All-Kind, and He sent messengers to teach people like Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon him. I would say this is simple. The, the human heart finds it simple, but it's, 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 it shouldn't be complicated. It shouldn't be confusing. But then maybe I do agree, yeah? But yeah, Bible was never simple. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, but can I give you a Quran to read or? Quran? Yeah, would you would you be interested in the Quran? I can give you an English Quran. Okay. Uh, uh, Ismail, okay. can I have a bag? A another thing I don't know, if I don't if you don't mind me mentioning. We believe that for example we all commit sins. Yeah, this is, this is the Qur'an and then some leaflets. Right, okay, thank you. We believe all human beings commit sins. We all have shortcomings. Mm -hmm. But we believe because God is the, the all love, the most merciful, the most kind, mm -hmm. the most loving, when I commit a sin, I turn to him directly and I say, oh my Lord, I've wronged my own self, forgive me. And if I'm sincere, he will forgive me. But we don't believe that the second person of the Trinity had to come down and had to die on the cross for our sins. We believe this is this is un, this doesn't make sense. Like if I commit a sin, why should an innocent person be punished for it? If if yeah. if if our father Adam 
and his wife, Adam and Eve, if they committed a sin, why should every child be born carry that sin? But it's the thing, like, no human is perfect, right? And I think everyone makes mistakes and yes, sins. Yes, definitely. And that was the way to... Just, you know, that God becomes a human and dies for us. Or in a way, because yeah. also, okay. also in Christian, like God is just, right? Yes. So if you want ever God to be just, of course He can forgive everything and, yes. and because He can, right? Yes. But if you're being just, you should punish. You should, should punish, punish someone who's innocent. I mean, but someone has to pay for some, somehow. But right? who should pay? Oh, who should pay? The guilty person or an innocent person? But that's the thing, because we believe yeah. the mere human cannot just recreate their own sins or, like, uh -huh. you know, yeah. redeem themselves. Just Why not? Like, we are not able to do that. Yeah, like, the only way to do it is through God. So. So God had to come a human and die for us. That was the way it was done. So you, you really, you think that it's, because you said God is just, we agree. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it's just for an innocent person to be punished and to bear our sins? Well, not like any innocent person, but that was God who did it for us. So you believe God died for our sins? Do you believe God died? Sorry, do do I you believe that God can die? And that way he did, because it was, yeah. Because at the, at the moment he was both like, obviously, human and God at the same time, which I know we uh -huh. didn't agree. Yeah. But that, that's part of it was human at that time, so he died. But okay. Of course he'd still, in a way, come back and survive because he was still good. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, just a, a, another point. When we say that, for example, I commit sins, we believe the sins can be forgiven in many different ways. One is I, I make sincere repentance. I seek si sincere forgiveness. A second way, for example, I could face hardship in life. Maybe I lose a loved one. Maybe I become sick. Maybe I, I lose some property. And because of that, it will you know, balance, balance out the sin. Or I could be punished in this life or in the hereafter and for that sin. But we, we never believe that an innocent person can take the sin. Because we, we believe that God is, God is the most merciful and He's the most just. Mm -hmm. So when He forgives, when He forgives, He forgives from His mercy. Yeah. Without any conditions. When He punishes, He punishes from His justice. The person, if a person is punished by God, they have deserved it. They brought it on themselves. Like, for example, you must have a family and friends. Someone must have done something wrong to you. And you must have once, at least once in your life, you must have just forgiven them. Without, without taking any, any recompense, any payment in. But you're saying that God won't do that. God will not forgive people unless an innocent person dies for them. I mean, am I, you know, am I forgive some kind of, you know, I don't know how you call it. Uh -huh. Am I forgive some wrong doing them to me by other person, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm not referring someone's sins if that makes sense. But you would, would, would you be unjust if you forget? If say for example, for example. Um, I lie to you or I, I take your property and then you one day you say I forgive you have you been unjust for forgiving me I mean it, but that's the thing that was just I do not know I mean that was merciful but was it just the person was paid to them what you did I, I would say is you're being merciful and yeah it, and if, if you it, but if you decided to punish me Mm -hmm. Or you decided that I have to return the I have to do good mm -hmm. to you in return. This will be justice. But we believe God can choose between the two. He can be just and he can be merciful. But he can forgive just because he wants to forgive. But it can't be a situation where an innocent person takes a sin. Well, I agree with that. Person cannot take a sin. Uh, yeah, God can. So, 
Was Jesus was Jesus guilty of our sins? He was not, but then he was not just a person. That's that's. I I would say you're stuck. Okay. You, you, know, you know why you're stuck? Because you know that God can't die. God can't. No. So, so yeah, you so I mean, so yeah. what you said was when Jesus died on the cross, that was the human, yeah, the human side yeah, of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the, God didn't die because God is the ever living and He never dies. But the human side of Jesus died. But then when I said to you, can an innocent person take our sins? You said that Jesus was not a normal person, implying that He's God. So you, you're stuck. He died. He didn't die. He took the, the sins. He didn't take. That the human uh -huh. part died, but that's the thing. It was not only that, so that's yeah. how he could uh -huh. do that, and that's how he could come back. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> does it? Does it? Okay. Are you? Does it make sense? Is it, does it sit well in your heart, or does the idea that God is one and He alone deserves to be worshipped? He has no partners, no equals, no offspring. Isn't that more comfortable in your heart? I know you have your culture, you have your background, you have your family. But which is more comfortable, to say that God is one, alone, or that God is a trinity and he's one? Yeah, but that's the thing, I'm still like, I'm still like kind of saying there's trinity, but there's one person, he's uh -huh. still one. How does that work? Because <laughs> it's just one, it's like, it's still one being, at the same time. Did Moses, do you, think, some... do you think Moses worshipped the trinity? Do you, think, not, do you think Abraham worshipped the Trinity? No, I don't think so. Do you think Noah worshipped the Trinity? So did God change? Did he increase? I, I don't think it was strange. I, well, perhaps he didn't have the whole knowledge back just yet. Okay. The Quran, it, it mentions Jesus. Jesus says, Inna Allah Rabbi Jesus says that Allah, uh, the name of God in Arabic, is my Lord and your Lord. Worship Him alone. That is the straight path. We don't believe that Jesus taught He was God and He told the people to worship Him as God. We believe that this came about later. You know, when the people, they mix the idea of the Roman world and the Greek world, you know, the, the Romans, they would believe a, a righteous person or an important person after they die can become a god. They would believe that gods can come down and they can have relationships with humans and you have, you know, semi-gods like Hercules. So we believe this idea was when the teachings of Jesus were mixed. That's why a final messenger came to clarify. I, I know it's a lot to think about. Okay. I mean, I hear you. I, I, I hear what you want to tell me. Yeah, yeah. It's because good thing we say that the, you know, all the messengers, they would teach the same concept that God is one, that this life is temporary. One day we're going to go back to uh, God and we're going to be judged by God. You need to be a good person. You need to try and fulfill the commandments of God. You need to stay away from the prohibitions of God. Whatever God says don't do, you try your best. So we believe this is what all the prophets taught. We don't believe that Moses taught one religion called Judaism. Jesus came and taught a religion called Christianity. And then another prophet came, Muhammad, and taught Islam. Peace be upon all of them. We believe all of the prophets, they taught the same religion. You know, Islam obviously is an Arabic word, so it may sound unusual. But the word itself, it means submission. Islam means submit to God. A person, they try to submit their whole self to God. They live their life how God wants. And we believe this was the religion of all the messengers. We don't find in the Bible where Abraham or Noah or Moses said, be a Jew. Rather, Jew is a, it's a tribal name. You know, the Jacob had, you know, God changed Jacob's name to Israel and he had 12 sons. One of the sons was known as Judah, according to the Bible. So people from this tribe, this is a tribal name, like a Jew, like a, a, nation, a nationality or a tribal name. Christianity, Jesus never said to be Christian. Rather, this was said by people, and they said, Christian is someone who is Christ-like. But we're saying- Christian, that was, the name was came up later. That's, 
Yeah. I mean, the, I think the book of Acts, it says the people at Antioch, which is, I mean, modern day Turkey, they, when they saw the followers of Jesus, they were the ones who gave them the name Christian. And obviously the name is stuck. But Jesus never taught this. We, we believe that Jesus taught that God is one, worship God alone, don't make any partners with God, and submit. Like Jesus, you know the, the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will, your will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When the will of God is done and we follow the will of God, this is submission. We believe this is the religion of all the prophets. Does that, does that sound reasonable? In a way, maybe. Okay. But, uh, like for example, there's an interesting verse in the Quran about Abraham. You know, Abraham, we consider Abraham is the father of the prophets. Because from his time, mm -hmm. all of the prophets, they came from his family line. Okay. So you know, Abraham, his, uh, he married Sarah. Okay. And at the time, Sarah was not able to uh, have a child. So she gave her, her maiden, Hagar, to Abraham as a wife. So Abraham married Hagar, and he had the first son, Ismail. Ismail. Then Sarah became pregnant later and she had Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob, Jacob the twelve tribes. From, from these family line, uh, David, Suleiman, Moses, Harun, Zachariah, John the Baptist, all the way down to Jesus. Whereas the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came from the line of Ismail. He came as, we believe, as the last prophet, but he came from the line of Abraham, but from a different son. The Quran it mentions concerning Abraham because you'll find everybody gives importance to Abraham. The Muslims will say that Abraham is, is you know, a righteous man, a righteous prophet. The Jews will say the same, the Christians will say the same. Everyone gives importance to Abraham, especially if you know the, the book of Genesis. The Quran says about Abraham uh, in the Arabic. It says that Abraham was not a Jew. How do we know he wasn't a Jew? Because his great grandson, Judah, that's where the tribe, come, that's where the name comes from. So the, the great grandfather does not follow the tribe of his grandson or his great grandson. The, Jew, the word Jew is a tribal name that came later. Makan Ibrahim a Yehudian, Wala Nasrarian, he was not a Christian. Abraham was not a follower of Christ. He didn't believe in a trinity, he didn't call to a trinity, he didn't follow Christ, he didn't believe that Jesus died for his sins. Makan Ibrahim a Yehudian, Wala Nasrarian, Wala Kin Hanif al Muslim, Wala Kin Kan Hanif al Muslim, Wala Kan al Muslim. It says that Abraham was a person who was upright. He turned himself directly to God and he submitted to God. He was Muslim. And he was not an idol worshipper. So we're saying this is the religion of all the messengers, all the prophets. So that's that's what we're calling to. I, I know it's maybe this is I, I don't know, maybe this is the first time you thought about it, the first time you discussed it. But obviously I don't know what's in your heart. The Quran mentions something very interesting. It says, It says, there's no compulsion in religion. I can't force you to believe in something. You can't force me. I can't stop you believing what you believe. Maybe, you know, physically we can stop people. But the, the belief you can't stop. What, what a person believes in the heart. But then it says, But the truth is clear from error. The truth should be very clear. It should be very simple and easy to understand. You shouldn't have to uh, understand philosophy, Greek philosophy, you shouldn't have to be highly educated. I mean, to be educated, there's nothing wrong with it. But the truth is, it should be understood by the, you know, the people, the educated people, the wealthy people. It should be understood by the shepherd, it should be understood by the farmer, it should be understood by the bus driver. The truth should be very clear, very easy. And that's what we're saying, this message of Islam is very simple. There's got one God, worship him alone. Sorry, the, if you read the Quran, the first command is 
يا ايها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون if you read from the beginning the first actual command in quran is all mankind so here is not for a tribe or a race it's all mankind all mankind worship your lord and then it explains why who created you and created those before you in order you may obtain righteousness that's the simple message of islam so now do you want do you have any questions do you want to look into it more do you think it do you think it's true do you want to become muslim There's a lot of to protest. I don't think I'm gonna become Muslim. No. Not today or not tomorrow, not ever. I mean, as I said, we 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 are here. The Quran says very simply, "Wa ma al Rasul illa al Balagul Mabin." The messenger, which is not us, but we are trying to do that job. The messenger is only responsible to convey the message clearly. We're here just to lay it out. But obviously, as I said, I don't know what's in your heart, but your, your face, it seems to think, you seem quite affected. And, and, it, and without being disrespectful, I haven't heard you offer a strong argument against what I'm saying. I mean, I don't really want to you know, start contra-arguments contra here. Of course. Because that's not what they're about, yeah? Because as you say, we are not here to like cross each other's Of course, of course, I, mean, yeah. I, was, I was curious to just listen to your point of view. Uh -huh. Okay, no problem. And you, you know. I advise you to think about it and even, you know, turn to the Creator and ask, show me, show me the right way. Yeah. Do you have any questions or any queries or any comments? I don't think now, no. It's a lot of <laughs> no problem, no problem. Okay, madam, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for stopping. No problem. We're here every Saturday if you have any more questions. But ha have a read, and then if you get a chance, there is, it's English Quran and then some uh, leaflets on the basics, basis of Islam. It has about Jesus, it has about women in Islam, it has about prophets in Islam, what we believe about the Quran, the, the Book of Allah. Just you know, we believe all the messengers brought books because the message was conveyed to us in two ways. A messenger came to teach us and to be an example for us and also they brought books. So Moses was given the, the Torah, David was given the Psalms, Jesus was given the Injil or Gospel. But I, and Muhammad, uh, peace be upon all of them, was given the Quran. I'm going to make a claim, but you can look into it. All the previous books, there may be some elements and truth in them, but they haven't been preserved. The books we have today, like for example, the 66 books of the Bible, the 39, if, if, if someone is uh, Church of England, if they're Catholic, it's 73. If they're Eastern European, it's more. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's here we have got Christianity, we did. And yeah, there's so many of, yeah. yeah, but the thing is, the, the books which we have, the Old Testament books, no one is sure for the majority of the books who wrote them. And we don't know how, like for example, Christians and Jews will say the first five books, you know, Genesis, Exodus, uh, Numbers, Leviticus and Deuteronomy, they will say it's written by Moses. But, every, but in, nowhere does it say that this is the word of God. Nowhere does it say that Moses wrote all these five books. And there's so many internal problems to show that Moses never wrote it. Like Deuteronomy, it mentions the death of Moses. It mentions the burial of Moses. It says that there has not that no prophet has risen in the children of Israel or the, the, uh, in Israel like Moses. So this indicates that it was written much after Moses. So majority of the books of the Bible, we don't know who wrote them. And we don't know, and we, we're not sure when they were written or how they got to us. Even the 27 books of the New Testament, most, we, the majority of them are letters of Paul. 
But the books of the disciple, uh, sorry, of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, most biblical scholars will say they never wrote them. These names were added later. But, but they are they're not the revelation which was given to Jesus. Jesus was given a message from God and he taught it to the people. These books were written later. Whereas the Quran, we are going to say the Quran has been preserved. The Quran was, was uh, revealed, sent down to the Prophet Muhammad in his lifetime. He taught it to the people around him. They wrote it down individually. They memorized it. He memorized it. It was practiced. And then after he died, within the first year of him dying, it was gathered in one book. Then the third Muslim ruler, his name was Uthman, in the, so 17 years after the Prophet Muhammad died, they made official copies and these were sent to all the Muslim areas. Until this time, this is the Quran we read and the Quran has been, you know, it's been memorized. You know, the, the Quran says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَلَّ الْقُرْآنِ لِذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ Allah says in Quran, we have made this Quran easy to memorize. So will anyone memorize it? Today we have hundreds it? of, okay. it's been memorized, hundreds of thousands of people Young and old, they memorize the whole. So if I read Quran and I make a mistake, and I'm reading from memory, someone who's beside me, without looking at the Quran, he will correct me. Because, but this is when the way is being preserved, and it has a complete teachings. Who is God? What do we believe about the messengers? What do we believe about the angels? What will happen after we die? What will happen on the day of judgment? And how to live our complete life. It's contained in the Quran and in the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So I would say this, this is from our evidence and weight to show that this is the truth, that this is the reality, this is the straight path, and this is the religion of all the messengers. Okay, thank, you. thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank all you. the best, take care. Okay.